Mom, I'm going to work now. You're at home, so your job is to do the chores, okay? Oh, and make sure that the house is absolutely spotless when I'm home. Got it? Okay. Ian, I have been doing this since I came to this house and lived with you too. Of course, I'll do the housework for you. And Ian, could you do me a favor? I'm not feeling well these days, so could you buy me some medicine on your way home? It won't take much of your time, will it? What? That's what you call a favor? It's nothing but a burden to me. I don't have time for this. Seriously, mom, don't you realize that I'm always buried under a mountain of reports from work? It's like I'm constantly swimming in deadlines and responsibilities. And now you're asking me to do something as trivial as buy some medicine? Can't you see that I have a million other things on my plate? I mean, come on, even if you're not feeling okay, you're perfectly capable of getting up and going to the drugstore yourself, right? You're not disabled or anything, so why are you acting like you can't handle this simple task? It's frustrating, mom, it really is. You know, I do so much for you, and sometimes it feels like you take it all for granted. It's like my efforts go unnoticed or unappreciated. It's enough to drive me crazy, you know? I just wish you could understand the pressure I'm under and cut me some slack once in a while. What? Ian, I'm not forcing you to do much. I'm just asking whether you're free to buy me some medicine. And how dare you talk to me like that? It's rude of you to treat your mother that way. I gave birth to you, loved you, and nurtured you until now. And when you're all grown up and have your own life, you just forget all of them? Oh please, stop with your stupid touching dramas and just leave me alone. I'm so tired with all your complaining and whining. Do you think that just because you're my mom you can make me do whatever you want? No way! And I have already told you, I have my work and the whole family to take care of. I'm exhausted right now, so could you please stop bothering me? Ian, I understand that you have your own life, but as your mother, I still have needs and sometimes require help. It's not about making you do whatever I want, but about the support and care that family should provide for one another. We're supposed to be there for each other, especially in times of need, right? Ugh, you're getting on my nerves. It's unbelievable. You're my mom, but it feels like you don't even make an effort to understand your own son. Ever since I was young, you constantly made me do things for you, and those things were like a never-ending nightmare. But now, things are different. I won't let you manipulate me like that anymore. I refuse to be your stupid, foolish son. I have my own life, my own job, and I work hard to earn money to support this entire household. You should acknowledge that and start adjusting your attitude towards me. If you do, we can all live in peace and happiness here. But if you continue with your behavior, well, I'll just have to do my own thing. And what thing is that, Ian? What exactly are you implying? You're making a mountain out of a molehill, don't you know that? What? Oh no I'm not. I'm just expressing my honest feelings towards you, you useless mother. If you can't understand how frustrated I am, then maybe you need a reality check. You constantly disturb me and make a fuss over nothing, and it's driving me insane! Ian, I understand that you're upset, but resorting to insults and threats won't solve anything. We're family and we should find ways to communicate and resolve our issues respectfully. Respect? What did you ever do to earn my respect? You're always intruding in my life, nagging about trivial matters and acting like you're the center of the universe. Well, newsflash mom, you're not. If you don't stop this behavior and give me some space, I'll have no choice but to throw you out of here. Got it? Ian? That's a hurtful and disrespectful thing to say. I may not be perfect, but I've always tried my best to take care of you and support you. Threatening to throw me out of my own home is completely uncalled for. Maybe if you had respected my boundaries and understood that I have my own life to live, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'm tired of being suffocated by your constant demands and melodrama. It's time for you to realize that I'm an adult now, and I deserve to be treated as such. Are you blaming things on your own mother? You've got the nerve! You don't have the right to say that about me! Are you losing your mind? You're insulting your mom! What's so serious about that anyway? And I'm not being rude at all. 
It's you who always wants to make every bad thing my fault. But don't think that I'll be tricked into your cunning trap. I'm not that innocent boy. Now, if you pardon me, I've got some important work to do right now. Here's the money. Just go out there and buy your stuff on your own. I'm not gonna help you. Bye. Hey, mom. Ian here. I can't believe it. Are you at the hospital right now? I'm really shocked. Really. What has happened to you? What a pity. Well, it's okay, Ian. I fell down the stairs and hurt my back. But her sister brought me into the hospital now. Don't worry about that. It's not a really serious wound. I'll be just fine. I'm really sorry I can't come to the hospital right away. I'm so up in my work, you know it, right? Every day I have hundreds of reports and contracts to do, so I'm really busy. Well, it's okay, Ian. Accidents happen, and I understand that you have your own responsibilities and commitments. Don't worry about rushing to the hospital right away. Your sister took care of bringing me here, and the doctors assured me it's not a serious injury. I'll be just fine. Thanks for understanding, Mom. It's nice of you to say so. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Could you please sign for me the paper I sent you yesterday? I bought some stuff for you, and they said that I needed to take your signature. So, yeah, could you sign it? And please hurry, because the delivery staff tells me that if the paper isn't signed this evening, they'll cancel the delivery process immediately. Oh, yes, of course. I signed it right when you gave it to me and said that it was really urgent. After signing it, I put it on the table in your room. Oh, really? I didn't notice it at all. I came home so late last night, so I didn't even bother to look at the table. Well, anyway, uh, thank you so much. You've done me a favor. I know you'll always help me when I'm in need. Of course, Ian. You know I'm always there for you, right? Anyway, if you have time, could you take some time to come here and meet me? I miss you so much. Well, I'm not really sure. I can't manage my time for almost anything recently. I have to work a lot to catch up with my daily KPI, but you already have my sister, so if you need help, just call her. But I'll, I think I'll try. Be sure to get well soon, okay, mom? Well, okay then, I'll try. But don't you think that it'll be better if you can come here and visit me just a little bit? Ugh, mom, you know how busy I am. I barely have time to breathe, let alone visit. Besides, I already told you that my sister can help you. Can't you just rely on her? Ian, I understand that you're busy, but it would mean the world to me if you could take some time out of your schedule to visit me. Your sister has her own life too, and it's not fair for me to burden her all the time. Mom, I get it. You want me to visit, but honestly, I'm swamped with work. My to-do list is a mile long, and my boss is breathing down my neck about these KPIs. It's like I'm on a never-ending treadmill, you know? I hear you, Ian. And I know work can be demanding, but family is important too, and sometimes we need to prioritize spending time with our loved ones. Your sister has been helping, but it's not the same as having my son here with me. I know, mom, and I do care about you. It's just frustrating when it feels like there aren't enough hours in the day. I wish I could clone myself or have a time turner like in those Harry Potter books. Then I could be in two places at once. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? But unfortunately, we don't have magical solutions. All I'm asking for is a little visit, even if it's just for a short while. It would mean so much to me, Ian. Fine, Mom. I'll see what I can do. But I'm really not sure, so don't wait for me. Okay, son. Oh, hi, Mom. Do you feel much better now? Yeah, well... Fortunately, everything's getting much better now, and I think that I will be discharged from the hospital soon. I am really happy to wait for this day to come. Don't you think so, Ian? Oh, of course. I wish the same. I'm thrilled to hear that you're on the road to recovery. It's been a challenging time, but seeing you get better brings me so much relief and joy. I can't wait for the day you're back home healthy and happy. Really? You do? That's good to hear. I'm glad you think the same. Yeah, and I'm really eager to tell you this important news as well. Well, you'll be really surprised to hear this. <laughs> really, Ian? Why do you always have to be so mysterious? Just tell me what the news is already. 
Don't keep me in suspense. Is that good news? Is it a special present for me? Oh, I can't wait to see it. What do you think I'll give you? No, you're totally wrong about everything. See this for yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. Is this a will? Tell me, Ian. I don't understand. Did you make up a will for me? And you tricked me into signing it so you can grab all of my property, is that right? I can't believe my eyes anymore. You'll have to believe me now. <laughs> and yes, I lied to you. I lied about everything. Remember that present I told you about? I told you that if you didn't sign the paper right away, they wouldn't deliver the gift, right? Well, there's no present at all. I made that all up. <laughs> Wait, what have you just said? There's no gift? So I think it's just a waste of my time looking forward to receiving the present from you. I shouldn't have trusted you all these days. Who do you think I am? Your gold mine? You're being ridiculous, Ian. Oh, come on, Hazel. Don't be so dramatic. It was just a little joke. Can't you take a joke? I mean, who needs a present anyway? Material possessions are overrated. It's the thought that counts, right? And the thought of tricking you into signing the will is absolutely amazing. Wow, I'm so intelligent, aren't I? Are you kidding me, Ian? How could you be so heartless to me? Your mother, like that. Thinking that my son has been lying to me all these times make me feel completely awful. How could you do that to your own blooded mother? Oh, mom, you're blowing this way out of proportion. Just remember that I'm still your blooded son, so I'm entitled to everything in this house. So I'm just taking what's mine. It's that simple, don't you understand? I'm not stealing your property. I'm taking my property. Got that? Entitled to everything in this house? Is that how you see our relationship, Ian? As some sort of ownership where you can just take whatever you please? It's not about who owns what. It's about respect and consideration for each other. I never raised you to be so selfish and callous. So now you realize my true face, right, Mom? <laughs> I don't give a damn about it. All I'm thinking of is the huge property that I'm going to inherit from you. That would be a huge load of money, right? <laughs> Understanding and fair balance. I understand that you're my son, Ian, but that doesn't give you the right to disregard my feelings or treat me like some obstacle to overcome. How could you do that to me? You're such a terrible son. You can just show me a little bit of sympathy. Oh, come on, mom. Can't you see the bigger picture here? We're talking about a massive inheritance. Money. Property. The whole shebang. It's like winning the lottery, only better. Because it's all in the family. <laughs> Ian, it's not about the money. It's about the way you're treating me. I thought we had a bond. A connection is mother and son. But all you care about is material wealth. It's disheartening to see how you value possessions over relationships. Of course. Why not? With all that money and property, I could live a life of luxury alone. I could finally have everything you've ever dreamed of. Fancy vacations, expensive cars, designer clothes, the works. Doesn't that sound appealing? Ian, money can't buy happiness. It might provide temporary pleasures, but true fulfillment comes from meaningful connections and treating others with respect. I can't believe you're so fixated on material possessions that you're willing to disregard our relationship. Oh, lighten up, mom. You're being so melodramatic. Why can't I take back the money that is sooner or later mine? And what do you need these properties for anyway? You're too old and weak now. It's almost time you kick the bucket, don't you think? You can't even walk the steps, see? That's why I decided to speed up the process and take what has to be mine. In this family, it's clear that you only care about my sister. I don't understand what she did to you, but it's obviously not fair to me at all. Well, I know you will eventually give all of your assets to her one day, so I would have to do it first to protect my own well-being. All of these things, the house... The garden, all of them will soon become mine. <laughs> Ian, 
It's not about fairness or what you think you're entitled to. It's about respect and compassion. You're talking about wishing for my demise just so you can get your hands on the assets. That's beyond cruel and heartless. Well, mom, it's not like you're gonna need those properties anyway. I mean, you're getting up there in age and let's face it, you're not as spry as you used to be. Walking up the stairs is a challenge for you these days. It's about time someone took charge and made better use of those assets. How dare you speak to me like that, Ian? My age or physical condition doesn't give you the right to treat me with such disrespect. And it's certainly not an excuse for you to expedite my departure from this world. Your lack of empathy is truly disturbing. You know what's even more disturbing, Mom? The fact that you clearly favor my sister over me. I don't understand what she did to earn your affection, but it's blatantly unfair. And mark my words, one day, you'll just hand over everything to her, leaving me with nothing. Ian, this isn't about favoritism. It's about your attitude and the way you're behaving right now. I can't believe you're willing to stoop so low and use these manipulative tactics to try and secure your own well-being. Family should be about love and support, not greed and deceit. Well, if you're not going to consider my needs and protect my future, then I have to take matters into my own hands. It's clear that you won't do what's right, so I'll have to do it for myself. And when that day comes, all of these things, the house, the garden, will be mine. And you'll have no say in the matter. <laughs> Ian, you're completely missing the point. This isn't about possessions or who gets what. It's about the relationship between a mother and her son. It's about trust, love, and understanding. Your obsession with material wealth is clouding your judgment and damaging our bond. Oh, spare me the sentimental lecture, mom. Relationships won't pay the bills or secure my future. Money talks, and I intend to have a comfortable life. If you can't see that, then maybe it's time for me to distance myself from your toxic influence. It breaks my heart to hear you speak this way, Ian. I never thought I would see the day when my own son would prioritize money over family. Your lack of empathy and disregard for our bond is deeply disappointing. I don't understand why you could grow ungrateful like this. Well, Mom, maybe it's time for you to reevaluate your priorities too. Maybe then you'll understand why I'm so driven to secure my own future. Until then, I'll do what I must to protect myself. And when the time comes, I won't hesitate to claim what's rightfully mine. And you know what? It's because of you that I had to resort to this. If you had even shown me some respect, I would not have been treating you this way. I can't believe you could be this wicked and nonchalant. Even though I was at the hospital, suffering from the killing pain in the back, you chose the time when I was the weakest to trick me. Your mother? That's unacceptable. If you could be that harsh, then I'll spill the beans to you. This will is not valid. What? What do you even mean? I don't understand. Oh, no, Ian. I'm not joking at all. It seems like you underestimated me once again. You thought you could outsmart me with your fake will, but little did you know that I had already taken the necessary steps to protect myself and my assets. Yes, that's right. I had the foresight to write a will long ago, anticipating the day when my health would deteriorate. I guess your plan to claim what's rightfully yours just went up in smoke, didn't it? <laughs> And don't even think about challenging the validity of my will. It has been confirmed and authorized by the proper authorities, so your fake will will hold no power whatsoever. No, this can't be happening. You can't just take control of everything. It's impossible for you to do this. But who will you give the property to anyway? It's me, isn't it? Oh, Ian, Ian, always the optimist, aren't you? Well, I hate to burst your bubble. But it seems like the reality has caught up with you. But I'm really afraid to tell you that I gave all of my assets to your sister. She's the one who takes care of me the most, even when I was at my worst. At that time, you always seemed to be too busy with your work, 
so I think maybe you should just stick to them all your life. At least it can bring you money, while I can't. No, this can't be happening. Well, Ian, you see, while you were busy scheming and plotting, I took the necessary legal steps to protect myself and my assets. It's called being responsible and thinking ahead, something you clearly didn't consider. So yes, it is possible for me to do this, and I have done it. You're one step too late, Ian. Your little plan has crumbled to pieces, and there's nothing you can do about it. This can't be the end. There has to be something I can do. You can't just shut me out like this. Oh, poor Ian. Still clinging to hope, aren't you? Well, I hate to break it to you, but you've run out of options. You should have thought about the consequences before you decided to manipulate and deceive. Now you're facing the repercussions of your actions. It's a harsh lesson, but one you needed to learn. And I have decided that it's time you move out of this house and mind your own living. Well, it's time for you to face the reality that you've created for yourself. And trust me, it's not a pretty one. Wait, what? Are you throwing me out? Of course. It's crystal clear that you don't deserve to live here and be my son anymore. I cut ties with you from now on. Get out! Please, Mom, there must be some way to resolve this. I never wanted it to come to this. Can't we find a compromise? A compromise? You say? Well, isn't that convenient? Now that your plan has failed, you suddenly want to find a compromise. But let me ask you, Ian. Where was this willingness to compromise when you were scheming and planning behind my back? It seems like your desire for compromise only surfaces when it benefits you. No, Ian, there is no compromise to be found here. You made your bed, and now you have to lie in it. Maybe next time you'll think twice before trying to deceive your own mother. Mom, please listen to me. I know I made some terrible choices and said hurtful things. But deep down, all I want is for us to repair our relationship. I know my fault now, and I'm sorry for everything. I never intended it to reach this point of animosity. Can't we set aside our differences and find a way to move forward? Ian, it's hard for me to trust your words after everything that has transpired. Your actions have caused immense pain and damaged our bond. It's not just about finding a compromise now that your plan to manipulate me has failed. It's about genuine remorse and a commitment to change. I understand, Mom. And I truly am remorseful. I never wanted to cause you pain or manipulate you. I got caught up in my own desires and lost sight of what truly matters. The love and connection we share as a family. I'm begging you. Could you just please give me a chance to make amends? No. I've given you hundreds of chances to do it, but you just refuse to listen to me. You're still stubborn and egocentric as I have thought. And I know that you'll never change, so in your dreams. No, I'm, I'm different now. I, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, Mom. I'll work on myself to become a better son. I will try. I'll make you see my effort. So could you please forgive me? I know you still love me, right? Just remember how close we used to be. You couldn't leave your son like this. Whatever you say, I'm still your only son. No. You're not my son anymore. Get lost, and don't make me see your callous face. It's disgusting. Don't even hope that I'll give anything to you. It's over now. You're nothing to me. So pack your things and get out of my house. After that, Ian kept trying to call me multiple times, begging for my forgiveness. But I had already blocked his number, so his attempts were in vain. As a result, Ian had no choice but to pack up his belongings and leave my house. With no place to call home and no well-paying job, he ended up finding a less than ideal living situation in a dinghy slum. I heard through the grapevine that he even had to take up a part-time gig as a cashier at a convenience store just to make ends meet. As for me, with the love and support of my daughter, things started looking up. Each day, my situation improved. 
and I could finally return home and embrace a happier life. It's certainly heartbreaking to have to leave my own son behind, but it was necessary to teach him a lesson and make him realize the gravity of his actions.